Do you want to learn how to edit your videos without having to spend hours learning how to use complicated tools? You're in luck because in today's video, I'm going to share a super easy workflow which makes editing your videos fun believe it or not. So keep watching to learn how you could turn your raw footage into an amazing polished edited video in record time. By the way, this video is sponsored by Riverside, more on them later. All right, step one is all about your editing style. Now, this is just a quick step, but it's something that we have to get out of the way, right? Because not all videos require the same style of editing. Let's take Mr. Beast, for example, right? Mr. Beast does these viral challenge-like videos. So his editing style is gonna be super different to my videos, for example, which are talking head educational videos. And my videos are super different from a vlogger's videos, which are more documenting their life and following them around on a day-to-day -day or week-to-week -week basis. Each video requires a slightly different editing style. And it's important that you understand the style in which your video should be edited before we even get started with the process. So ask yourself, what type of video are you trying to create? Is it a sitting down talking head video like mine? In which case your editing should be more about keeping up the pace of the video and adding things like graphics, sound effects, images, etc etc. to bring the video to life. Don't worry, I'm going to show you how you can do that very easily in just a moment. Or is your video a vlog style video? In which case, it's about keeping up the pace of your video by including multiple different clips, multiple different perspectives of what you're doing throughout your day to ensure that your viewer remains engaged throughout your video. Maintaining pace throughout a vlog looks like mixing up your shots. So mixing up your wide angle shots versus your close ups, including B-roll clips, using music throughout to try and break up the monotony. Or is it more of a challenge style video? video when actually your editing is designed around one big tension point. So maybe you're doing a challenge where you're, I don't know, sleeping in a supermarket overnight. Isn't that something that creators used to do and then like they got put in prison or something? <laughs> like, isn't that illegal? I don't know. Let's say that's what you're doing. Please do not take this as a recommendation before doing so. Let's say that's the concept of your video and therefore your editing style will be rapid cuts that lead people to this big moment where you actually complete the challenge and you sleep overnight in a supermarket. Again, can't stress this enough. This video is not me endorsing that video idea. <laughs> so I want you to take a second to figure out what style of video you are trying to create and keep that in mind as we move on to the next step. Step number two is all about the editing software that you're gonna use. Now, because we're talking about editing your videos for beginners, I have to recommend a specific tool because it is perfect for this stage of your journey. That tool is called Riverside. Now, Riverside is an online studio for high quality podcast recording and video editing. They have a whole suite of different AI tools that you can utilize to edit your videos quickly and easily. Do you know what? Let me open up my Riverside so you can get a tour of what it looks like before we move on to the next step, which is all about editing and trimming your clips. All right, so this is a sneak peek into my Riverside side, let me show you how to navigate it. Essentially on the top left hand side, you'll see an option to navigate between different studios. These are basically your core folders that you can use to organize yourself. So the thing about Riverside is it's great for editing your content, but you can also record content in there as well. If you've ever featured on someone's podcast, I'm actually willing to bet that they sent you a Riverside record. Excuse me. <laughs> He's literally right by the mic. Do you have something to say? No, she wants to be on camera today, so you have to bear with her. A lot of podcasters use Riverside to actually record their content because you can record inside Riverside as well, which is why you can see there's even a studio in there for when I used to record for my old podcast, right? So my studios are broken down based on the project. You might want to do the same. Maybe you've got a project for your YouTube content, a project for your TikTok content, etc. We're going to stay in the demo studio though, because this is the one that I use when I film videos like this so that I don't mess up my normal edits. Inside the studio, you then have a few other sub sections. So you've got projects, which is where your actual video edits can live. If you ever want to add a video for editing, you just click new and then you click the upload button and then you upload the video footage that you want to edit. As I mentioned, you can record content inside Riverside itself. So if you want to do that, you might want to click the record button or you can plan a recording session if you are going to be recording with someone else for a podcast or for an interview. If we click the record button, it will open up and I'll show you what it looks like if you want to record your actual content inside Riverside. So it's going to ask you a couple questions. There's me. Just a different angle. Overexposed in this angle though. Okay, so Jade Beeson, I would normally use headphones. You can set your camera that you want to use. So you don't have to record using your webcam. If you want to link up whatever camera you normally use to film, you can actually do so and link it to your Riverside. Then you want to pick your mic. So my microphone is currently linked and your speakers and you could click join studio. There's an option here for you to invite people should you want to invite them after the fact. If you don't need to, then you could go ahead and click record. Another quick feature that I want to show you that would really, really help 
help people is that you can actually upload a script or prompts to Riverside and you can use it as a teleprompter. You just need to copy and paste the notes that you want to use to film, click the teleprompter button, press play, and it will slowly show you your script or your prompts, which makes filming videos a lot easier for people. So as you can see, this is a super powerful tool, not just for editing your videos, but also for recording them. Oh, and before we move on, you can even live stream through Riverside as well. Like I once did a live stream through Riverside onto my YouTube account. If you want more information on that, let me know in the comments and I can do a whole video on it. By the way, guys, you can actually get 15% off of Riverside when you upgrade your plan using code Jade. Beeson. So if you're not already using Riverside and you want to use it to follow along with these steps, head to the link in my description and use code Jade Beeson. When you upgrade your plan, you will get 15% off. Thank me later. All right, let's talk about the good stuff. Let's talk about editing your videos in a really quick and easy way. So we're going to go back into my demo account. We're going to click on one of the videos that are already there. Let's click on this one and we're going to open up the editing window. Now, there are a few tools that you're going to want to use that are going to make editing your videos really, really easy. One of the main reasons why I recommend Riverside for beginners is because it does really clever things with the transcript of your video. So on the left, you can see there is a full transcript, right? This is every single thing that I'm saying in this video has been transcribed and is available here. So not only does that mean that I'm able to navigate through my transcript with ease, but it also means that Riverside has broken down my video into chapters. So can you see on the bottom here, which is the timeline used for editing, it's actually broken down by chapters. So here you can see that it's when I'm talking about being vocal about your core values. This section is all about focusing on creating content that you enjoy. I didn't add these in guys. Riverside listened to my video and did this themselves. So navigating through your content is super, super easy when you use this tool. Now with the text editor, how I like to use it is to read through my transcript and to find sections that I no longer want in my video and to just highlight them and remove them like this. So just like that, I found a part of my video that maybe I don't want to use in the actual edit. I'm just gonna highlight it and delete it and Riverside will delete it from the actual video itself. This makes going through your content and finding bits that you want to remove or finding bits that you said wrong or finding things that you repeat really, really easy. You just need to scroll through here, highlight, I'll do another example, and it will delete it like magic. So when it comes to tidying up your videos, because let's face it, we're all human. You will make mistakes when you're filming. That's totally okay. If you were watching the raw version of this video, you would have heard me repeat almost every single sentence at least a few times because I mess up all the time, even though I've been creating content for almost five years. So you will mess up on your content and that's okay. But using the text editor will make it really easy for you to find those slip ups and remove them, right? So that's your first step. You wanna make sure that you get to the point where your first draft of your video has been tidied up and any of those little mistakes have been removed. The second stage is to tighten up your video. So you wanna make sure the pacing is good. You wanna make sure that you removed any fluff and any other awkward pauses throughout your videos. Now, in order to do that, I want you to click on the AI tools button and I want you to utilize the different tools that are available here. There's a remove pauses tool where you're able to use this slide bar to specify how many pauses you want removed from your video based on the length of the pause. So if you're like me and you want your content to be really fast paced, then you probably want to remove almost as many pauses as you can. So here that would be removing 46 pauses from my content. If you're someone who doesn't care about having your video that fast paced, it's a little bit slower, then you can move it further down and maybe only remove six pauses from your video. Either way, I do recommend you use this tool because there will likely be pauses in your video content, just where you're thinking of the next thing to say. Using this tool will make it really easy for you to remove those pauses without you having to do too much work. So you wanna click that. There's also a tool that will allow you to remove any filler words. So you know when you say like, um, ah, uh, but, that kind of stuff. You can remove those by using this setting. And actually there's been an update and now it gives you a few different options in terms of how you wanna remove the filler words. So you can just cut them from the recording completely, or you can use the smart feature, which allows you to balance the edits with a mix of cuts and mutes. This basically allows you to preserve the flow of the video, or you can use the mute feature, which basically mutes or silences any filler words as well. So I'm probably going to use the smart option. It's also a find fluff option, which basically allows you to use AI to find parts of your video where you're just saying things that don't have any meaning. <laughs> We all do it, although I will say in this video click, I haven't done it because it's telling me that there's no fluff. I still do it though. Sometimes I babble on, as I'm sure you can tell, and therefore I do need to use that option just to make sure I'm removing any 
thing that I'm saying that doesn't actually add value to the video or to the story. Once you've used those settings, you should end up with a draft of your video that has been trimmed and cleaned up. So you wanna to navigate to the start of the video over here. You just wanna move this timeline and you wanna press play and you wanna watch the video the whole way through and just make sure you're happy with all of the edits. If you're not, and there's still some bits you wanna move, you can use a timeline feature to change the different bits that you're editing and it will actually show you what you're cutting out from the transcript, can you see? So you can use that feature to tidy it up in case there's any sections that you're not quite happy with. All right, let's move on to step number three. Are we step number three? <laughs> no, we're step number four. Are we step number four? Yeah, we're step number four. My God, I'm not with it today. Let's move on to step number four, which are all about enhancing your video. So for a lot of people who are in the beginner stages of their video editing journey, they will likely just export the version that we've already created and take it from there. However, because I've showed you how to tidy up and clean up your video really quickly and easily using these tools, I'm hoping that you have some more time and energy left to really enhance your videos further. That is where this step comes in. So this is where we do things like add music, add captions, add photos, etc., and just take our content to the next level. The reason why this is useful is because adding these different effects can really help with the storytelling of your video and it can really help to keep people's attention retained throughout the whole video, which is super important for creators, right? Okay, so let's talk about the different things that you can add and let me show you how you can do them. If we scroll down, there is a music option within Riverside where you can browse through their library of royalty-free music. So you can use all of this music inside your content without having to worry about copyright strikes. You can browse through the library and find some music that's best suited for your video. Super important for people who do vlog style content, right? Music is a huge part of your editing. So you can either pick the most recently used, which is this one for me, or you can browse based on their ready-made collections, right? So these just help you find the best music based on like the style of content that you're creating, like lifestyle, and you can browse through there, right? Once you've found the audio that you want to pick, you can just click this plus button. And as you'll see, it'll be added to the bottom. So this is the audio track added to the bottom here. Now pay attention to the length of the audio track, because if I wanted to have audio playing in the background of my entire video, this wouldn't be the right track for me to select because as you can see it stops here right whereas if I just wanted to have some audio playing through this part of my video then it's perfect I can press play and I can hear what this audio will sound like as a backing track now if you do want to use it as a backing track don't forget to adjust the volume so you can click on the little burger icon there click volume and effects you can make sure the audio is quiet enough for you to still hear yourself speaking in the background this is also where you can add a fade in and fade out and this is what I love about using Riverside to edit your videos because this is such an easy way for you to create these effects if you're using another editor this could actually be a lot more complicated you can alternate it so you know how long you want the fade in to be and how long you want the fade out to be and that is a great way for you to edit these videos and ensure they work with the overall vibe and the story that you're trying to tell with your content so that's music super easy to add you might also want to add captions this is especially useful for things like short form videos for your long form videos on youtube you don't need to add this because youtube does this automatically but if i click on the caption button you'll see that there are a bunch of different styles that you can add you can pick the one that you prefer and even if you don't think it's fully perfect yet you can literally edit everything about it in the editing window. You can change the font, you can change the style, you can change the size, you can change how many lines appear on the screen, you can change the animation, you can change the color, everything you wanna change about it, you can change it. Like you can really, really make this your own, right? Okay, so that's the captions. You can also do things like upload different images and assets, or you can use the actual images and videos option here. For me, I like to have B-roll in between my video content because it helps to break up the monotony of just seeing my face speaking to you all the time. So you can either add B-roll by browsing the video section here and typing in a keyword to find the right b-roll for your video or you can upload your own b-roll here so you can you see there's an option to upload images videos or even audio if there's specific soundtrack that you want to use when it comes to doing things like adding images that i also like to use because i think it really helps again break up the monotony of my video content you can upload your images here and you can see that it will appear straight away on the timeline what you have to do is hover over the image and adjust the timeline here to adjust how long you want this image to appear on the screen right so I'm just zooming in and out of the timeline right now. If we click here, you'll see that when the timeline reaches this image, this is how long it's going to appear on the screen for. So if I only wanted it to appear on the screen for a short amount of time, I would just adjust the timeline here. And then if I press play, you'll see that once we get to the end of the timeline, it disappears from the screen. So get creative with that. You know, it's so easy to drag and drop your videos and your images that you want to use and literally just move them around the screen like this, which again, if you've not used other video editors, you might not realize like how wild that is and how easy 
easy this is to do, but take it from me. This is a very easy, simplified way for you to enhance your videos with music, captions, images, B-roll, etc. This is a really easy way for you to use it. So I really encourage that you do use it because it will bring your videos to life. All right, let's move on to the next step, which is all about exporting like a pro. When you are ready to export your video, you just want to click on the export button on the top right hand corner and Riverside will give you an option in regards to what you want to export. So if you want to export the entire video, it will already be set as the video. All you want to do is potentially change the format. Now, if you're just starting out and maybe you don't have the best internet connection, then this option HD is fine. If you do have a strong internet connection and you've got some good storage, then I would actually recommend exporting in 4K. I normally select this option, which allows me to remove the watermark for Riverside. And you can also do things like normalize your audio levels, remove background noise, just to really clean up your audio, ensure it's super crisp. Which actually reminds me, there is a quick setting that I do recommend that you use before you export, which is Magic Audio. When you select Magic Audio, it basically enhances the audio of your video and makes the sound quality even better. So select export, export video, and it will automatically be saved to your downloads. The other options are for you to only export the audio and you can change the different formats here. And that's really useful for like podcast repurposing, or you can export the timeline and this will allow you to export it to a desktop based editor like Premiere Pro or Final Cut Pro. And it allows you to basically continue editing over there. So those are all the options that you need, but normally you just wanna go with the video option and then it will export. Let's move on to step number six, which is kind of a bonus step because we really have covered the basics of editing, but there is more that you can do and you can do it very easily using this co-pilot feature. Now, even though you've edited a great video, let's say it's a long form YouTube video, well done, super proud of you. I would clap, but my dog is currently asleep on my other hand. What you can actually do next Next is then repurpose that video into more pieces of content. And there's a really quick and easy way that you can do that. So let me show you. I'm just gonna press this ask co-creator button there. It's basically your mate who helps you repurpose your content. Think of it that way, right? If you open it up, it's essentially a chatbot, which allows you to take the video that you've just created and turn it into so many different things. So there's a magic clip button, which basically will allow you to cut down your YouTube videos into vertical videos that you can use on Instagram or TikTok or as a YouTube short. I'm gonna link to a video where I talk about repurposing in a lot more detail. This will teach you how to repurpose your videos the right way so that the short form cut downs actually perform Really well. You can also, if we click all suggestions, it will actually show you all the other things that it could do. So it can create a promotional trailer for your video. It can create a thumbnail, a social media image for your video, an episode title, episode description, show notes, great for YouTube, a newsletter email, if you have a newsletter, a blog post, LinkedIn post, Instagram caption, thread for X, or it will give you some top insights. If we click newsletter email, and click send, let's see what it comes up with. It's just so wild. AI like will never cease to amaze me. Within seconds, it's come up with a subject line, preview text and a full email for a newsletter based on that video. Just wild. Do you know what I love the most about this specifically? Cause I have my own newsletter is that you'd be creating a newsletter based on content that you have created. So it's not like you sat down and said to AI, hey AI, who says hey AI? <laughs> It's not like you sat down and you wrote a prompt that was like, write a newsletter about business. Then you just copied and pasted that and sent that to your audience. I really don't like that. What this does is actually use what you've already said. So you've already come up with this. You already prepped this video. You filmed the video. These are your opinions already. It's just turning it into a newsletter for you. And of course you could provide some feedback to that as well. So you could respond and say something like, make the tone more witty. And there you go. It's gonna send you a revised version which has a more lighthearted, witty tone. And you can continue going back and forth until you're happy with the final output. And remember, you can do this for several things, not just newsletters, but blog posts, LinkedIn posts, so much different stuff, like it's wild. And that is how you can edit your YouTube videos quickly and easily. Do not forget that you can get 15% off of Riverside when you upgrade your plan using code Jade Beeson. Thank me later. If you feel like hanging around, I recommend watching this video. It's the one I mentioned previously. It's all about how you can repurpose your content the right way, okay? I really recommend watching this next. Thank you so much for watching. As always, I can't wait to see you in my next video.